You are at 800 feet AGL on the climb out just after takeoff. Airspeed is 80 knots. Your engine has failed. Take a breath. Fly the airplane by pitching the nose forward and achieve the Cessna's best glide speed, assuring that the airspeed stays well above stall. Now, immediately execute the engine failure memory items. The memory items are completed. The engine has failed to restart. We must direct our full attention to flying the airplane, maintaining positive control, and landing on the most suitable spot that the immediate terrain has to offer. Since our airspeed is slow, and we have very little altitude to work with, we will elect to proceed in a forward direction while making slight and shallow maneuvering turns, and will decide to land to the left of those trees in that rough looking field up to the left of our nose. As our descent continues, we notice we will in fact make the field. As we extend flaps, we issue a quick mayday to ATC and prepare for the landing. Once again, our approach is made at a normal airspeed and our flap application allows us to touch down at an even slower airspeed. Since we departed the runway into the wind, electing to continue straight ahead for the power off landing has yielded the ability to also land into the wind and has minimized our ground speed during the impact and rollout into the dirt field. In this example, the time from engine failure on the departure leg to a landing in the dirt field was 1 minute and 20 seconds. These are two contrasting examples designed to illustrate for you, the student, the procedural steps involved with safely and successfully executing an emergency approach and landing in the unlikely event of an engine failure and subsequent failed restart. Understand that this procedure should only be simulated and practiced on dual flights with a UND certified flight instructor under controlled and pre-briefed conditions. According to the UND Aerospace Cessna 172 standardization manual, at no time should the pilot continue the simulated emergency glide past 500 feet AGL unless he or she is conducting a dual flight with an instructor on board and a stabilized approach and landing can be made at a UND approved airport. Upon reaching 500 feet AGL, the pilot must initiate a normal go around and return to cruise flight in his or her practice area. The FAA's Private Pilot Practical Test Standards booklet prescribes several standards that must be met by the private pilot candidate before this maneuver can be considered satisfactory on an FAA check ride. Prior to taking the check ride, the pilot must verify that he or she exhibits knowledge of the elements related to emergency approach and landing procedures, analyzes the situation and selects an appropriate course of action, establishes and maintains the recommended best glide airspeed within plus or minus 10 knots, selects a suitable landing area, plans and follows a flight pattern to the selected landing area considering altitude, wind, terrain, and obstructions, prepares for landing or go around as specified by the examiner, and follows the appropriate checklist. Each emergency is unique, and with each emergency comes a unique set of situations and variables that will ultimately affect the pilot's decision-making process and the final outcome of that emergency. However, the procedures and techniques offered in this video are standardized. They are clear and to the point. They are presented step by step so that a pilot in a time critical emergency situation may easily draw upon these learned procedures and take the necessary action in order to remedy the situation quickly and effectively. Should you ever in your career find yourself in a power off emergency or any emergency for that matter, fly the airplane first and have confidence that your training has prepared you to affect the most successful outcome possible. From flight level 280, you will be clear to have fun and fly safe.